Chappelle, what is it up, man? Yep. You ready for this adventure? Let's go, brother. All right. So we've come out this morning to Sintra, this uh, beautiful mountain village town. And you know, we were hoping, we came out to a viewpoint, so we are hoping I could fly the drone from here, maybe see some of Sintra, but it appears that's not the case this morning. It actually kind of looks like we're in a horror movie. We've got these foggy clouds. I mean, it's pretty cool and moody, but it's kind of the complete opposite of the vibe I was going for today. Yeah. yeah. Is it usually like this or not really? It can be pretty foggy, yeah. But oh, yeah. I mean, it is pretty cool looking. Just not the vibe I was kind of going for. I guess we're gonna have to look at that. The fog is just. It's pretty awesome, I gotta say. I can't be too mad. It stopped raining for a moment, which is amazing, because we're in the village of Sintra, and check this out. This is, this is the village palace. So there's gonna be even cooler ones, but I thought this was like a great starting point. You got these giant chimneys up top. Boom, giant chimneys. And this is one of the palaces here in Sintra, in the main village. Sintra is a resort town in the foothills of Portugal's Sintra Mountains, near the capital of Lisbon. It has been a long time royal sanctuary with these pastel colored villas and palaces. The most noticeable is the hilltop 19th century Pena National Palace, which is known for its fairy tale like design and colors. Because this was my last day and we were on such a time crunch, I decided we had to go see the castle first. The villages, the buildings, and all of this are just like a short 25 uh, miles away from Lisbon, would you say? 25? Well, dead, yeah. So this is like a super popular day trip for everyone who goes to Lisbon. Usually they take a train in. I got Felipe here, so we drove in. So we're pretty, pretty lucky, other than the fact that we had to park <laughs> all the way down to the bottom and had to walk all the way up. But it's amazing here. This is probably one of the best day trips from Lisbon. Check out this path we're on right now. This is the way up to the castle that we're trying to go to. It's like all overgrown and green and stony. It's a very cool medieval type looking path that we're walking on right now. It's like we're in a fairy tale, but a rainy day in the fairy tale world. Slowly but surely we're making our way up I keep stopping for pictures and uh, it's taking us a long time. But right behind me is actually a tomb. There is a tomb right here. It's got this little skull and crossbones which you can see. And uh, we're on our way to the top of the castle and we just find this tomb. It's a small little structure but it's pretty neat. So as I'm sure you guys have realized, it's not the clearest day so far. But it is my last day here in Lisbon. So I have to come in here. So we just... Uh, we paid to come into this castle. We're about to go walk along the castle walls. And he was saying it's like five times more windy up on the castle walls. So we have to make sure that a wind doesn't come and like blow us off the side. That's the only thing we gotta worry about. <laughs> What's the name of the castle though in Portuguese? Castelo de Moors. And in English? The Moor Castle? Moors Castle? Close enough. All right. I like it. We're gonna head up there to the top of the castle walls. When was the last time you came here? 20 years ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> Has it changed? Or is it the same? Nah, the same, the same. <laughs> I feel like I'm on the Great Wall of China too. The name of this castle is the Castle of Moors, referring to the Muslim inhabitants during the time period that this was constructed, which was the 8th and 9th centuries. This castle acted as a central place in the territory that was primarily for agriculture and protecting the population. I've never been to the Great Wall of China, but this is what I imagine like a smaller version would look like. You just have this in your backyard? This is amazing. <laughs> I would come here every day. Can you see anything? Sometimes. 
Sometimes. I'm just expecting like King Kong to come out of the mist. We've now made it to the top, the highest point here on this castle. And wow, when the when the fog clears, it is quite the view. To our last palace today, we have made it to what, what was it? Quinta da Galera. Oh, that's gonna be hard to spell, <laughs> but all right, we've made it here, and there is one specific thing here that I want to show you that is the whole reason I wanted to come here. We are now arriving at the location. Oh my god, I didn't think we'd be here so quick. Oh my god. This is everything I've ever wanted in life. This is one of the wells. I've seen it all over Instagram. I had no idea it was here in Lisbon until I was looking up things to do in Lisbon. And this was like the top picture you had to come do in Sintra. Built in 1904, this 88 foot well was never used as a well and was never built to serve as a water resource at all. It was actually built for secret ceremonial purposes. The owner, a wealthy Portuguese businessman, Antonio Augusto Carvalho Montero, was a well-known Freemason. With the assistance of an Italian architect, he designed and constructed this property with mysterious parks and underground tunnels. All of the structures are filled with many symbols which are linked to masonry, alchemy, the Knights Templar, and Tarot mysticism. The well has a striking spiral staircase supported by carved columns that lead down to the bottom of the well through its nine landings. It is believed that the space of these landings, as well as the number of steps in between, are linked to Tarot mysticism and Masonic principles. We're now heading down to the bottom of the well. The stairs have gotten really wet for some reason, like, it's just all water. But we're heading down now. The light is getting dimmer, and uh, we're going to the very bottom where the initiation was held. At the bottom of the initiation well is a compass over a Knights Templar cross, which is said to have been the coat of arms of Montero. Initiation well looks like an inverted tower, and depending on the direction the adept chose to walk, it represents a journey into the depths of Mother Earth or rising up into the light. Symbolically, the well represents death or rebirth, which is typical within many mystical traditions. There are no written records of how the wells were used and what precisely went on there. We have finally made it down, look at this. Very rarely like this because it's raining, so there's not as many people as there normally is. So we're super lucky. This is this is insane. I'm so happy to be here. Right here is the spot. I can only imagine what kind of ceremonies, initiation processes went down here. Where are we right now, man? It's like we're in the Bat Cave. The last challenge to get out. Yep. Don't fall Don't say it yet. in the slimy green water. Word on the street is you can't leave Sintra without trying one of these special pastries from Sintra. So we tried one yesterday, which was in Bellum, and we're trying another one here in Sintra at this place called Casa Piriquita. If I'm butchering that, I'm sorry. But uh, Felipe is getting the pastries right now, and we're gonna try them out. So in order to eat these pastries, we have come out to the westernmost part of continental Europe. There is. You can see down here we got these giant, giant cliffs and they just drop off. The water over here is very like, it's like very, like, I don't know, milky, milky blue right now. I think it's because of the storm and the water is just like this weird color right now. So we decided what better place to come and eat these pastries than the westernmost part of continental Europe. Yeah. It's also starting to rain again, so the day has come full circle. Trifsage. Trifsage. Yeah. All right. I'll try a piece. These pastries always look so good here. Is that like sugar all covered all over it? Yeah. No wonder. Oh my God. 
It's amazing. <laughs> it just tastes like a warm apple pie pastry. Jeez, that's amazing. Ah! <laughs> the sugar. Thank you, Felipe, for taking me around, showing me all these cool things. If you guys are not following him, go check him out. I'll have a link linked below on Instagram. A great photographer. And uh, we're gonna finish up these pastries and enjoy the westernmost part of continental Europe. If you guys like this video, click that subscribe button and check out my last two videos in Lisbon that I had posted prior to this. Also, if you wanna learn how to travel cheap, stay in shape, and grow your brand, check out our Patreon community, which is linked down below. That is it for today, guys. Thank you, Rogue Nation, for watching, and until next time, explore the world.